African drums are talking. Through the long night over vast forests of mangrove and mahogany, the drum notes hover in brooding mystery. Like the souls of dead warriors, called from eternity by the ghostly rhythm of the ceremonial drum. It is the chant of the juju grove, the liturgy of the jungle. Listen, they bring you a story of Africa. Professor Anton Edwards and his little party of explorers in Africa descend into an extinct volcano and find a strange race of people. The only way for them to regain the outside world is evidently through what is called the Passage of the Rock, a dark, forbidding cavern whose yawning mouth is set in the cliffside and through which, at certain seasons, the great apes roam. After some goodbye to the queen and her people, the professor, Lorna, Jack, and Nguru enter the cave mouth. The first torch is lighted. Suddenly, Nguru's sharp eyes make out the figure of a man leaning against the wall just ahead of them. The professor calls, but receiving no answer, they advance, keeping the silent figure covered with their rifles. Hold the torch higher, Jack. Oh, oh. Oh. And Guru was right. He's dead. No, I saw him move. Yeah, the torch flickering, that's all, my dear. Are you sure, Father? Well, I'll make sure. I'll... Look out. Look. What? Keep away. What? What? What happened? Well, that body must have been standing there for years. It started to crumble as I touched it. Oh. <laughs> well, let's get on. Oh, that was horrible. Well, how could the thing stand there all that time, oh, sir? Goodness only knows, Jack. Notice the gradual ascent of the floor, Professor. Hmm. Wonder what part of the country we'll be in when we get out at the other end, eh? Do you think it'll be anywhere near our camp with all the stores? I don't see how it can be. I think we're traveling in the opposite direction. Yes, I think so, too. But we must do all we can to remember the point where we emerge. That's vital. I want to lead a party from the academy back here, and if I can't find the place, I daren't open my mouth. If we have enough evidence of our discovery, yeah, sir. Well, the only evidence I shall ever rely on is to let them see the place with their own eyes. Father... What are those little pinpoints of light sparkling from the walls and ceiling? Uh See them? Yeah. Let's examine one of them, Jack. All right. Yeah, put the torch closer. Hmm. Have to use a flashlight, I guess. Well, you would notice those things, wouldn't you? Trust a woman to see diamonds a mile off. Diamonds? Why, George, that would pay for an expedition back here, wouldn't it? Yes, they're diamonds, all right. At least this one is. Can't make an impression on it with a knife. Oh, dig it out, Father. I'd like to dig, dig it out with what? Have you got a hammer and chisel? Well, can't you dig around it with a knife? <laughs> a solid rock, Lorna. Yes, it's a hard volcanic rock at that. But can't we take any with it? Well, I'm afraid not, my dear. We'd have to blast them out. Come on, let's keep moving. Oh, isn't there any way we can get some of them, Jack? No, I don't think so, dear. Lorna, Nguru here, what I speak. Oh, you can, eh? Well, let's get on, folks. There must be an underground river in front of us. I can hear it now. It must feed the river that gives the city back there its water supply. Yes, I always wondered where it came from. I have to light another torch, sir. This one's practically burned out. All right. You notice we've been making a gradual ascent all the time? Yes, and I'm about due for a rest, I think. <laughs> we'll take a spell in a moment. Well, here's your river and girl. Oh. Yeah, and here's where the rope comes in handy. Let's see, about 20 feet across, I guess, huh? Is it very deep? Now, you people take a rest while I test it. Buana, poli, poli. Huh? What do you see, Unguru? No, see, Buana. Smell a mamba. Crocodiles, eh? What's wrong, sir? Unguru says he can smell crocodiles. But how could they get down under here? Well, probably floated down with the river. Hold the torch of fire. Hmm. Don't see anything. Put your flashlight on as well, Lorna. All right. Nothing I can see there. Probably a crock passed here recently. Well, there's a large rock out in the middle of the stream. Two good jumps and I can get the rope across. Buana, no rock. Naona, mamba. The rock's moving. Get back. It's a crocodile. Oh. Keep that beam on, Lorna. It's rising slowly. The light did it. Yes, wakened it. 
What a huge beast. Great Scott. <laughs> I've never seen a head as large as that before. Careful, everyone. He's drifting this way. Buona mamba loco. Yes, it's seen us. Well, I'll have to shoot. Keep the light steady. Here, take my flashlight, Jack. Okay, sir. Hmm. The eye is the only place. Uh, don't think I got him properly. Keep back. It might try to climb out. No, it's moving with the stream into the tunnel there. There he goes. Too bad. I thought we were going to have some steaks for dinner. <laughs> so did the crocodile, Jack, so we're even. Well, put the flashlights out. We must save the batteries. Buona. Now, no. Well, what is it, Ngoro? There's something moving over there, sir. The other side of the water. Eh? Who comes to disturb my solitude? Who comes? Oh, for Pete's sake. Who is it? Buona. It is wife, O oh, devil. Who is it, Thomas, with light? Answer me. We are friends who travel through the mountains seeking an outlet to the passage of the rock. Seeking an outlet, eh? <laughs> or I'm the of the priest. It's an old woman. I think she's blind. At least she's not looking at us. Her head's cocked on one side, listening. Cease thy muttering and answer. Or must I set my apes upon thee? Oh. Apes? Old mother of time. There are no priests left in the city that lies without the rock. What is that thou sayest? No priests left? The people have cast them forth, and peace reigns in the city of the rock. Then the day hath come at last. Ah, it hath come. It was written. But, but if there be peace in thy land, why seek ye an outlet? We are of the outside world and journeying back to our people. So, the stranger. <laughs> it was written. Hide thy light that I may see the path over the water. <laughs> yes, there is the way. Shall I put the torch out, sir? No, just keep the light from shining directly on her face. Evidently, she can see in the dark. Not used to lights. She's feeling at the bottom of the wall with her feet. There must be a path of some sort there. Hmm. Yes. Base of the wall juts out enough for a foothold. Which woman good, Buana? She's become devil tongue. Well, I hope the good devils tell her to show us a way out of this place. Which is the stranger? Fetch forth thy hand that I may know thee. Careful, sir. That's all right, Jack. I've seen these people before. They have to make contact. Their sense of touch is better than our eyes. Ah! It is he, as it was written. Then I have not waited in vain. The prophecy is about to be fulfilled, and I shall be free to return then. <laughs> is there an outlet to this passage, old mother? Is there an outlet? <laughs> have I not waited upon thy coming to show thee the way? To lead thee out of the path of the sleep that kills, I, thou wert heading into it. <laughs> Didst thou say thou wert journeying back to thy people? Yes, old mother. Their cities lie many days' march beyond this rock. Many days, sayest thou. I and many days beyond that again. For before thee lie paths of danger... Thy hand hath not yet put aside the sword. How far shall we journey before the light of the sun shall warm us again? The sun? Take no thought of the sun. Tis the moon that holdeth thy destiny. I, the moon, beware of the moon. Yes, but the moon will rise and set in spite of me, old mother. <laughs> Aye, and in spite of thy child. My child? <laughs> what is this prophecy to do with my child? Speak, woman, and forget your riddles. Patient. No harm shall befall thy daughter. No, no harm. Bid her stretch forth her hand that I may see more clearly. Put your hand out, Rona. <laughs> Better be careful, sir. I don't like this somehow. There speaks the voice. Yes, the voice. No, it is not thy daughter the moon has cast longing eyes upon, but this young man who is near to her. This gets worse and worse. What on earth is she talking about, sir? I haven't the faintest idea, Jack. 
But evidently the future holds some excitement for us, and it's all connected with the moon in some way. Buana, moon daughter, maybe look little Buana for Mary. Huh? Uh-huh. Well, that sounds more sensible. What did Goro say? Well, there's an African myth which says that at certain seasons the moon sends his daughter to the earth to find husbands for themselves. So, Nguro suggests it's the daughter of the moon who is going to cast longing eyes upon Jack. Well, that's certainly more tangible. Well, I'd give a lot to get a good look at the moon right now. <laughs> the moon, eh? Thou shalt see the moon. <laughs> It lieth beyond the sleep that killed, and that lieth beyond the water. Come, follow me. Hmm. Well, let's go, people. Take hold of my belt, Lorna. Yes, Father. You follow her, Jack, and the guru will bring up the rear. Okay, sir. Uh-huh. Careful. Careful, everyone. The ledge is very narrow. Patten yourselves against the wall and walk sideways. Oh, what's that noise? Those, those are apes. Apes right ahead of us, Jack. 